Okay. For our ASP, ASP viewers, this is a collection of Vietnam memorabilia. Uh, this is a meeting of the New Jersey Arms Collectors. We've asked Vietnam veterans to bring memorabilia, and we're having a guest speaker today. And these are some items that I've picked up during my, my career. First of all, the signs in the back. These used to be used in dining halls during the Vietnam era. You know, motivate troops stateside, keep them alert, live. There's a lot more of them. These are my three favorites. The one in the middle there uh, is always a popular one whenever I have adolescent boys around looking at my exhibits. So, and the word Chuhoi means give up, just so you know. And um, this is it's an exhibit of a few items here. One I just picked up this week, so I'm sort of proud of it. Now, if anybody out there can read Vietnamese and can translate it, I'd really appreciate it. But this was sold to me as a Viet Cong flag. And again, I cannot, I do not read Vietnamese. So maybe one of our viewers can send in a translation. All right. And over here is uh, a Chinese pistol. And let me see if we can get the markings on it there. 1966. And when I close the slide, which is very difficult, on the top, some more markings. And if you look at the chamber, I was told that was blood rust from guys who experienced that. They said rust, blood will rust uh, real fast, uh, the bluing, everything else. So this is, you know, something that a North Vietnamese officer or Viet Cong official would carry. It's, it's a Chinese-made copy of the Takarev pistol. And when I got it, it came with this holster. So this is the issue holster. You can see it's got like blue velvet inside, an extra magazine, cleaning rod, uh, sort of a shoulder strap, and it had a pouch which can hold 10 loose rounds. I counted them and stuck them in there. So you could carry another spare ammunition uh, for the magazine you know, and for the pistol. Uh, this is supposed to have been a belt from that era. Okay. And it's plastic, which of course holds up better than leather. But the holster is leather. And like I said, it's the Chinese copy of the Takarev pistol. Um, again, stuff I picked up over the years, different places I was at. Okay. This was printed, I believe, in 1970. Okay, this is the sun helmet that was usually worn by the North Vietnamese. Oh, these came back as souvenirs. They take up, they don't take up that much space. You can stick them in your duffel bag. Um, an intelligence document here from the U.S. Army Intelligence School, and it was on the Viet Cong infrastructure. And over here, some paperwork that when you wanted to bring back a firearm, I knew Major Holland, he passed away many years ago. He was in Special Forces, and he came back from Vietnam with uh, some firearms, and I acquired one of them. See if there's anything more on here. No, no. Okay, that but that was one of the documents cleared for continental United States. And you got Type 44, ch uh, ch well, Chicom Type 53 carbines, similar to Russian Type 44. There's a form, so it's registration of a war trophy firearm. Again, when you wanted to bring something back. Over here is another example of the kind of paperwork. Uh, in the beginning, guys were allowed to bring back a lot of firearms and stuff. Uh, usually SKSs and um, the bolt-action rifles. Some guys in the early years actually brought back AK-47s, and I've seen exhibits, but I think that stopped around 1967-68. Uh, Viet Cong Mine Warfare, excellent training manual, 
and one in here I can still find. It shows you different ones, but I'm going to see if I can find the one that is similar to what um, terrorists in the Middle East do. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, here it is, the little girl mine. Suicide, right. You take a child, give them explosives, send them toward the Americans, then detonate them. And over here we have some SKS carbines. Both of these are Chinese. This is an export model. There are no Chinese markings on it except the number M21, and it has a blade bayonet. The other one is your standard Chinese communist SKS with the spike bayonet. That was pretty common. Any markings on them? Yeah, let me see if we can do that. Let me turn it around. Yeah, here it is. All right. All right. And let me get the other one, the export model. Oh. You can make it out. I know it's, I think it just says M21 and a serial number. All right. Okay. Again, uh, some of the guys were able to bring back souvenirs from Vietnam. And oh. you know, sometimes the serial numbers, you know, originally were stamped in the wood, too. <laughs> and Newsweek magazine, when the war was ending. Newsweek, end of an era. Again, for those of us who are baby boomers, Vietnam was the thing that hung over us, whether you served, didn't serve, tried to avoid serving or whatever, uh, you couldn't ignore what was going on from 19, I would say, 64 to 75, that 11-year period in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a major event in our lives, whether we wanted it to be one or not. And uh, this is just some items that I've been able to acquire over, my, over the years. Can you tell more about that hand grenade? Oh, the hand grenade, somebody told to me as a training Chinese grenade, it's based like it's on the same principle as the potato masher, you know. And this is... MLC to a little red book, you know, English translation. Like I said, for all the ASP viewers, if you can answer some of the questions, in particular the translation on the flag would be really appreciated. You know, we're here to share knowledge. And uh, this is an exhibit at the New Jersey Arms Collectors. And there's a lot of them here today because our guest speaker is going to talk on his experiences at uh, Quezon. Fantastic display stand. Thank you. Okay.